You know, art insurer warns museums of an unexpected threat. Selfies. <laughs> Selfie shots are the new public enemy, destined to obliterate all of society. I can personally attest to that. This is a real life fact. After attempting to enter an NBA arena with a selfie stick, I was quickly told that I'm not getting in and to dump it or take it back to my car. Conveniently, they offered a locker at $15 a pop. Selfie sticks. Whistles. Horn. Noise <laughs> leaders. To store the piece of plastic for the duration of the game. What a scam. Anyways, it seems like museums are getting in on the fun of banning selfie sticks as well. Hiscots, an art insurer, says that the crime of walking backwards in museums has in many cases led to valuable pieces of art reportedly being damaged. Incidents of damage are often caused by visitors bumping into or knocking over artworks while taking selfies, sometimes resulting in significant financial losses. For instance, a visitor caused a domino effect in a Los Angeles gallery, damaging over $200,000 worth of art. In response, museums worldwide are imposing bans on selfie sticks to protect their collections, alongside dealing with concerns about activist-driven vandalism, prompting a reevaluation of security practices. You know what? I have an idea. Why don't museums allow ghosts to take selfies? Because they keep saying they want to capture the spirit, but all they end up doing is scaring away the art. Ooh, that was really good, right? Anyways, Mark Zuckerberg explains why so many tech companies are doing layoffs right now. According to Zuckerberg, many tech companies overhired during the pandemic's e-commerce surge. As things return to normalcy, these companies are now resizing their workforce to better reflect current needs. This means letting go of employees who may have been crucial during the peak but are no longer essential in the present economic climate. Apparently, companies went a little cuckoo bananas during the pandemic, hiring like they were handing out participation trophies at a participation trophy factory. <laughs> that was good. Zuckerberg also suggests that companies are discovering unexpected benefits to operating with a leaner structure by streamlining management layers and eliminating redundant positions. They aim to become more efficient and agile. The shift towards a smaller, more focused workforce might be a new trend emerging with the tech sector. It's important to remember that Zuckerberg's perspective as the CEO of Meta, which has also undergone layoffs, might not be entirely objective. Other factors like economic concerns and changing market conditions likely play a role as well, as, you know, trust the old Zuck is a role model for transparency and looking out for the people, of course. Moving over to Intel. They're accused of inflating CPU benchmark results. Looks like Intel took the fake it till you make it model a bit too literally. They bulked up their benchmark scores like a bodybuilder on a questionable protein shake to get caught flexing in the mirror. Oh boy, so I tell you, they're definitely in hot water this week. Apparently, they've been caught red-handed inflating the benchmark results of their Xeon processors. Imagine trying to impress someone with muscles only to be caught wearing inflatable armbands. Not a good look. The culprit? Special compiler optimizations that gave Intel's CPUs an unfair advantage in the spec CPU 2017 benchmark. It's like tweaking the rules of a game just so you can win. Not cool. This whole mess has invalidated over 2,600 benchmark results, mostly for their Sapphire Rapids processor. So those fancy numbers you saw online might not be entirely truthful. While Intel claims they were just trying to optimize performance, others are calling it a deceptive tactic. And let's be honest, it doesn't exactly inspire confidence in their products. The good news, however, this probably doesn't mean your Intel CPU suddenly sucks, but it does highlight the importance of taking benchmarks with a grain of salt. So remember, folks, not everything that glitters is gold, especially when it comes to benchmark scores. Be an informed consumer and make sure you do your research. As a matter of fact, I heard that Intel is offering free air compressors with every CPU purchase. Seems they're trying to help you inflate your own performance. Speaking of performance, we have uh, the whole pack, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and many tech peers signed to combat election-related misinformation. Huh, here we go again. Attention election season warriors. Buckle up because the battle against fake news just got a high-tech upgrade. We're talking deep fakes, folks. Those creepy, convincing videos that make anyone say anything, even if it's a politician confessing their love for polka music. No offense to polka lovers, tech companies are starting to sweat, realizing these deep fakes could wreak havoc on elections. Imagine seeing your favorite candidate admitting to, well, 
let's just say something scandalous right before you cast your vote. Talk about voter confusion. The problem, spotting these deep fakes is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. They're getting so good, it's scary. But don't panic just yet. Tech companies are like knights in shining armor. Well, maybe more like knights in cockies, fighting the good fight. They're developing fancy tools to sniff out these deep fakes before they can do any damage. However, there's a twist in the tail. Some of these same companies are creating the very tools that could make deep fakes even more sophisticated. It's like giving the firefighters flamethrowers, a bit counterintuitive, wouldn't you say? So what's the takeaway? The fight against deep fakes is a complex one uh, with no easy answers, but at least we're aware of the dangers and there are people working on solutions. Just remember, stay vigilant, think critically, and don't believe everything you see online, especially during the election season, because in the future, even your grandma might be able to star in a deep fake. And that's a world we don't want to live in. Getting back to Facebook, Meta tells Instagram Facebook users how to avoid Apple fees. Meta, the folks behind Facebook and Instagram, are in a bit of a tussle with Apple over fees. Apparently, Apple charges a hefty 30% pass on anything you buy within their app store, including boosting your precious social media post. Meta thinks this is outrageous and, frankly, they might have a point. So what's their plan? Well, starting soon, if you boost a post through the Facebook or Instagram app on your iPhone, be prepared to cough up an extra 30%. It's been like that for years. I, I will say that's a real pain. But fear not, there's a loophole. Meta's like, use our website instead. Bypass the app store entirely and avoid the fee. It's like sneaking into a movie theater through the kitchen. Technically not allowed, but who doesn't love saving some cash? Meta wants more control over their money while Apple defends its app store ecosystem. As for us, the users, well, we just want to post our cat pictures without breaking the bank. So the next time you want to boost a post, remember, there are options. Pay the Apple tax through the app store or venture into the wild web of web browsers to save some dough. Just choose wisely and maybe stock up on some popcorn because this tech drama is far from over. OpenAI completes deal that values the company at $80 billion. Imagine showing up to work one day and finding out your stock options just made you a millionaire. Yeah, that's the reality for OpenAI employees right now. Thanks to this crazy valuation, talk about a company perk. The world of artificial intelligence has, as you guys have heard, has witnessed a remarkable development this week with OpenAI. And I'm not gonna go down that road because it's been covered so many times. Well, basically here, OpenAI is in the news because they're securing a deal that values a company at a staggering, as I said, $80 billion or more. This represents a nearly three-fold increase in valuation Within just 10 months, this deal, unlike traditional funding rounds, involves the sale of existing shares through a tender offer. This allows employees to cash out their holdings, potentially rewarding early contributors and incentivizing further talent acquisition and retention within OpenAI. The high valuation signifies investor confidence in the company's ability to develop groundbreaking technologies with significant commercial and societal impact. Are you old enough? Remember Benny Babies? This feels a bit like that, but instead of stuffed animals, it's artificial intelligence. Hopefully, this AI bubble doesn't burst and leave us with a bunch of useless robots and empty wallets. Reddit has reportedly signed over its content to train AI models. Imagine your midnight Reddit debates about how pizza toppings might be a million dollar idea. Now, Reddit's making that a reality and all it took was a bit of controversy and a $60 million handshake with AI bigwigs. Reddit is reportedly engaging in a $60 million content licensing deal with a major AI company, aiming to use its vast array of posts for AI model training. This move comes as Reddit prepares for a potential $5 billion IP Yo, highlighting new revenue possibilities in AI. However, the decision has sparked controversy among, among its user base, following a series of unpopular platform changes, including charging for API access and modifying user data policies. Charging for API access? Next thing you know, they'll be selling ad space in our dreams. These actions have led to significant user backlash, raising ethical concerns over the use of user-generated content in AI development. We made it to the end! Hey, thanks for watching and hanging out. I'm Salo, and I'll see you on the next one.